Hello, this is Josh Patel, and today I'm bringing you another biology lesson. Today we will be doing Chapter 2, Chemistry of Life, Lesson 2, Properties of Water. As you can see, our key concept for today is water's unique properties allow life to exist on Earth. Most of this lesson is going to be chemistry, so pay attention. Life depends on hydrogen bonds in water. Water is a polar molecule, and polar molecules have slightly charged regions. So one region will be slightly positive and one will be slightly negative. So as you can see, this is H2O, which is another name for water, and it's a polar molecule. As you can see, the oxygen region, which is right here, is slightly more negative, while the hydrogen regions are slightly more positive. So this makes it a polar molecule. And so these hydrogen bonds in water help life extremely. Nonpolar molecules do not have charged regions, so they will be the same, to, same throughout. Hydrogen bonds form slightly positive hydrogen atoms and slightly negative atoms, so it's polar. Hydrogen bonding is a weak bond compared to the last two we learned, which are covalent and ionic bonding. Hydrogen bonds are responsible for three important properties of water, which are high specific heat, cohesion, and adhesion. So high specific heat is means that it takes a lot of energy to heat up a substance. The real definition is the heat required to raise the temperature of the unit mass of a given substance by a given amount, and this is usually by one degree. So cohesion is the attractiveness of same substances. So water attracting to water is cohesion. And water has high cohesion. So water generally likes to attract to each other. So if you see, like if you spill water on a table, you'll see a bunch of little clumps of water. You won't, it just won't be like spread around the whole way. And on a leaf is another example. You see like water droplets, not like a mist or just a whole layer of water. They're clumped together. Adhesion is attracting to another substance, which is like if you have a penny and if you ever dropped a bunch of water droplets on it, they'll stick together and form a little dome, which would be this image right here. It's sticking to the surface of whatever it is. And in this case, it's trying to stick to the side walls of the tube. This image here is cohesion because the water is sticking to itself. It's going back into itself. It's not wanting to stick to the wall. So this one has more adhesion. This one has cohesion. They're pretty similar, but adhesion is with another substance. Cohesion is with together. Co is a, means with together. So cohesion is attracting to itself. Many compounds dissolve in water. This is another specialty of water. It can dissolve in many molecules. A solution is formed when one substance dissolves in another. A solution is a homogeneous mixture. So homogeneous is same throughout. So this mixture, you can't see the separate particles in it. And then there's also heterogeneous mixture, which you can see the different particles, like trail mix is a heterogeneous mixture, because you can see the M&Ms and the peanuts and stuff like that. Solvents dissolve other substances. They are the ones doing the dissolving. And then there are also solutes, which dissolve in a solvent. So there's two parts of a solution, a solvent and a solute. Since solvent is more words, it's the bigger part in the solution. So it's the one dissolving the solute. Solute has less letters. So it's the one being dissolved because there's less of it. So in this image, we can see the solvent is the white particles. There's way more of them. And the word is longer. And the solute are the small red ones, which there's only four of compared to all of the rest. So there's less of them, and it's a smaller word. So that's how you can remember it easily. So the solute is being dissolved in the solvent, and this is what it looks like. This is the solution. It's homogeneous because it's the same throughout. You can't see any particles. 
like dissolves like, so polar dissolves nonpolar, and nonpolar dissolves nonpolar. Polar substances cannot dissolve nonpolar, so they don't, they always remain separate, they don't mix together. An example would be oil and water. If you ever make one of those columns where you pour different substances in and they don't mix together, they form layers. Like if you pour oil on water, it'll like oil will float to the top and you can actually see the difference in them. That means they're different. One's nonpolar and one's polar. Some compounds form acids or bases. An acid releases a hydrogen ion when it dissolves in water. So it has a high H plus concentration and acids are pH less than 7 on the pH scale. The scale goes from 0 all the way to 14. Under 7 is acids and above 7 is bases. The closer you get to the extremes, so 0 and 14, the more acidic or the more basic it gets. And in this diagram or image here, you can see this side's acids, this side's bases. And acids have a more H plus concentration, so you can see all the little H plus it releases when it forms an acid. And this is the low H plus concentration, which is bases. So you can see how there's very few of them. So bases remove a hydrogen ion from a solution. So it has a low H plus concentration. And a base, as you know, is a pH greater than 7. So the more basic it gets, that means the closer to 14. And this is the same picture right here. A neutral solution has a pH of 7, which the one major neutral solution is water. Pure water has a pH of 7. But now since pollution and stuff, most of our water is becoming more acidic. So it's getting a, more, a higher H plus concentration. So this is the end of this lesson, which is chapter two, chemistry of life, lesson two, properties of water. Our next video will be on chapter two, lesson three, which is carbon-based molecules. So I hope you enjoyed this lesson. And if you missed anything, go back and review it. And also make sure you watch our next video and good luck in your journey in biology.